This is the Fujifilm X-H2S. You can see by the S right here, the badge. And this is the Fujifilm X-H2. There's no, there's no S right here. So you're thinking about getting a new camera. You heard Fujifilm announce three cameras the past three months and Christmas is around the corner and you wanna get yourself a little Christmas gift and you wanna decide where that money should go. In today's video, we're gonna compare the X-H2 and the X-H2S. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about these two cameras and see which one is the right buy for you. We're gonna skip what's the same about them, which is the entire camera body design. They look identical to one another, except the, X the X-H2S has, has that S badge and the X-H2 doesn't have any sort of badge on it. The Fujifilm X-H2S has a stack sensor. Having a stack sensor means faster readouts, better autofocusing performances, and better rolling shutter. The X-H2 does not have a stack sensor and the autofocusing is slower than the X-H2S and the rolling shutter on the X-H2 is poor, but it's not the worst I've seen from a modern camera. The X-H2S has a 26 megapixel sensor and the X-H2 has a 40 megapixel sensor. The 26 megapixel is plenty in today's age and if you require a higher megapixel uh, because you crop a lot, you're a retoucher, or you shoot a lot of product photography, you can benefit from the high megapixel from the X-H2. The autofocusing hands down goes to the X-H2S. With its stack sensor, this thing is a machine. It can shoot up to 40 frames per second with electronic shutter and has a better hit rate than the X-H2. The autofocusing just locks onto a subject and I have to give the autofocusing to the X-H2S. The X-H2 can do 20 frames per second with electronic shutter, but it's with a crop. So if you're shooting action and you need the speed to capture a dynamic setting, then go for the X-H2S. I can see this camera being very good for sports and action photographers. Photography wise, both are great. Colors are great from both. Both have great dynamic range. I find you can save a lot of detail with these RAWs from both these cameras, which is excellent. Like I said earlier, I think people who need the megapixels will know they need it. When people ask me how the X-H2 was, I just told them that it's basically a 26 megapixel sensor with extra, extra details. Meaning you're not going to notice until you zoom in on your photos. Both give great image quality. They look exactly the same until you zoom in. Let's move on to the video specs. The Fujifilm X-H2S shoots 6.2K open gate, meaning it uses the full sensor. This is great for reframing your footage and post if needed. I usually use open gate to get a vertical crop for my TikToks or for my YouTube shorts. The X-H2 can film 8K30, but the X-H2 does not use open gate. The X-H2S has 4K120, whereas the X-H2 can only do 4K60 with a small crop. The X-H2S also has more dynamic range than the X-H2. The X-H2S has 14 stops at dynamic range and the X-H2 only has 13 stops at dynamic range. Both can shoot ProRes internally which is great. But because of the 8K sensor, the X-H2 does have a few tricks up its sleeve that the X-H2S doesn't have. The X-H2 can also switch its resolution. It can also be filmed in 6K but it's not open gate and it can also do 4K HQ meaning they downsampled from an 8K sensor to give you an image that is crispy, sharp, and full of details. It also has a function where you can use digital zoom in your 4K mode where you don't lose quality because of that 8K sensor. But this is not available in 4K60. So which one should you get? Both cameras are great cameras. It just boils down to your needs and wants. If you shoot wildlife, sports, or any type of action, or if you're a filmmaker, get the X-H2S. The X-H2S is the better buy for you guys. The stack sensor helps anybody that requires it for their fast paced situation. If you're serious about your video creation, the X-H2S is it. The X-H2 does have great video specs, but because of the rolling shutter performances, I think the filmmakers will gravitate towards the X-H2S. The X-H2 video capabilities works best when it's in a static position, when it's locked off on a tripod. That's when you get to see the 8K shine. And boy, does it shine because it's a very beautiful image to look at. But not a lot of people can consume media in 8K yet. So for now, what I usually use the 8K for is to punch in to get a different type of shots. If you're a portrait photographer, if you're a product photographer, you're going to enjoy the X-H2 more. The 40 megapixel gives you enough detail for you to use and retouch with. 
If you're someone that prints large size prints, then you're going to love the X-H2. The X-H2S is also $500 more expensive than the X-H2 because of its stacked sensor technology. That's what you're paying for. But that doesn't mean the X-H2 is shit. The X-H2 ain't no slouch as well. So at the end of the day, it's really up to what your use case is. Hopefully that answers some of the questions you guys got. I personally like having both because it fills each other's uh, gaps and weaknesses which is great in my opinion. I like to use the Fujifilm X-H2 when I go out and shoot portraits and then when I need to do some video stuff, I use the X-H2S because the autofocusing and the 4K 120 just looks really, really good. I use the X-H2 for portraits and I use the Fujifilm X-H2S when I don't need that much resolution and when I'm shooting uh, video, I like to use 4K 60 because the 4K 60 on the X-H2S is looks amazing there's no crop on it all right that is it for me guys if you like this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe i'll see you in the next video i love you okay bye 14 minutes 14 motherfucking minutes